Hello, welcome to Wildwood and welcome to our rat barn. We'll be telling you a little about the rats in here. And first up, I have to say, I personally like rats. I started working with them about 12 years back and I didn't know much about them at the time. And they very quickly won me over. However, uh, a lot of people think that rats are dirty and smelly and nasty creatures. So we're going to see if we can change how you see them. We have two types of rat here at Wildwood. We have the brown rats and the black rats. Black rats on one side, brown rats just behind me. Neither type is actually native to Britain. The black rats we think arrived between Roman times and the Crusades. The brown rats arrived later in the 17th and 18th centuries. More about that as we go through. So let's show you the black rats to start with. The black rats were the first rats to reach Britain. We think they got here sometime between the Roman period and the Crusades. They are great climbers, as he's demonstrating, and they spend a lot of their time in attics and in the rigging of ships. That's actually given them the nickname of attic rats. And one of their other names is tree rat. And the truth is, that originally the black rats lived in Malaysia and they did spend most of their time in the trees. It was only when people started moving through the area and trading they started to realise that there were other places to go and other food resources to exploit. Black rats are now thought to be extinct in Britain. One of the differences between them and the brown rats, these guys like it a little bit warmer. In this exhibit, we actually have a special bedroom area for the black rats, and it has a nice underfloor heating. And you'll actually find them on cold days, all snuggled up in a huge pile. Something that's true of both the brown rats and the black rats, they do like living in groups. Sometimes there'll be arguments and squabbles, but by and large, they like being with other rats. These are the main type of rat you find wild in Britain today. And one of the reasons for that is they are incredibly adaptable. Brown rats can climb, run, jump and dig. They also have the long chiseled teeth at the front of their mouths, like all rodents. And believe it or not, given enough time, they can chew through concrete. Pretty much anywhere in the world you find people, you find brown rats. We even know of brown rats living in Antarctica in the scientific stations along with the scientists. Now, brown rats get a lot of bad press and we're going to try and clear up some of the misconceptions. First of all, these are dirty. No, brown rats are not dirty. If they're not asleep, eating or playing, they'll actually be spending their time cleaning themselves. They spend a lot of their waking time grooming, particularly their fur and their whiskers. Second, they carry disease. Well, it's true that in the wild, brown rats do carry germs and diseases, but it's not their fault. It's actually our fault. We've made it very, very easy for the brown rats. They like to live in tunnels and we've made loads of tunnels. We've made drains and sewers. Unfortunately, those are places where you find diseases. The brown rats pick up the diseases and unfortunately spread them. Another myth, these rats spread the Black Death. No, brown rats weren't in Britain at that stage. It was actually the black rats that helped to spread the plague, the Black Death. And it wasn't even really them. It was the fleas on their backs. I think the biggest thing that freaks out people about the brown rats are the long, bald tails. If you offered someone a choice between a pet hamster or a pet rat, they will usually go for the hamster because it's soft and fluffy and cute. The truth is, um, you're more likely to be bitten by a hamster than a pet rat. Hamsters tend to be nocturnal. They're trying to get to sleep when you want to play with them. Rats are more active any time of the day or night, so they're more likely to play with you. 
The tail, though, the tail has lots of different functions. Uh, it's there to help them balancing. Uh, it's also there to help them lose heat. If you covered it in fur, you've got to get rid of your heat some way, and the tail lets them do that. They pump the hot blood into the tail, the heat radiates away. But the reason why it's bald is to do with digging. If you think of a rabbit, they do a lot of digging, they dig the soil through their back legs. They don't have a long bushy tail. If you think of a squirrel, squirrels do have a long bushy tail, but they don't dig. Squirrels have a long tail because they need it for balancing. The rats, well the rats need a long tail for balancing, but because they dig they don't want fur on it, otherwise it would just get clogged up. So it's very very sensible to have a long bald tail. Now I have to say I have a lot of fond memories of working with rats. They're surprisingly smart, intelligent, and can be real characters. Brown rats can have an intelligence level up to that at least of a seven-year-old child. They get to recognize people. It's said that if you tickle a brown rat on its tummy, it will laugh. And if you do that enough, it'll start laughing as soon as you walk into a room. Like I say, they can have real characters and personalities. I've known individual pet rats who were explorers, criminal masterminds, even a couple that were complete couch potatoes. And one of the reasons for talking to people about the rats in general and other animals is to actually make people realize how strange, how amazing, how special they are. So like I say, next time you see a rat out and about in the wild, just take a minute to think just how smart and clever they really are.